On this week's episode, I'm joined by an Emmy Award winner. No, no, no. A two-time Emmy Award winner. This is how far we've come, ladies and gentlemen. I speak to Mike Prickett, a cinematographer from Hawaii and famous for works like Chasing Mavericks, X-Men 2, and the incredible HBO documentary, The 100 Foot Wave. Mike also just happens to be crazy in love with Portugal and Nazaré. We discuss, amongst other things, his incredible story of what got him into the water and started shooting this amazing footage that he's now famous for. Sharks, food, Fatima, the 100-foot wave, and what, besides these amazing waves, Mike loves about Nazaré and Portugal. For those of you listening, head over to our YouTube channel to watch this episode and see some of the photos that we published during this episode. And for those of you watching, click down below and subscribe. And now over to my conversation with Mike Prickett. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal, The Simple Life. And it's a real honor to be joined here by Mike Prickett. Mike, all the way from Hawaii. Uh, welcome to the podcast and thanks for being on the, on the show. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to talk about Portugal and all the beautiful things that happen over there. Amazing. So let's just get a couple of things. Let's just get some housekeeping things out the way here. Uh, this is probably, I think you might be the guest that's the biggest time difference that we've had. It's a good 10 hours. Uh, so it's 10.30 at night for you. It's 8.30 in the morning for me. So thank you for, for doing this in the wee hours of the night. Um, and let's also get one other elephant or Emmy out of the room. Those are two Emmys in the background there, are they not? Yes, there's a, there's a um, primetime Emmy and then a tally from um, two different, basically surf movies that I've done. Um, one's a TV show that we just finished called The 100 Foot Wave um, in Nazare, and the other one's uh, Down the Barrel, which is a surfing thing that we did kind of all around the world as well. Amazing. So you're the first Emmy winner. So I'm really delighted. Thank you so much for being on the, on the podcast again. Mike, so why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about you? Well, my name is Mike Prickett. I'm a, I've been a surf cinematographer for about 40 years. Um, I started out shooting still surfing, still shooting surfing. And then um, I slowly got better at stills and I got bored with it. And I started shooting 16 millimeter film from the water. And then I got really good at that. And I just kept doing it. I would shoot for my friends at first. And then I started doing little commercials. And now I do big feature films and TV shows and all kinds of stuff. Amazing. Amazing. Um, it's quite an interesting story how you got into the water. Um, it, it all started kind of by accident or by an accident. Do you want to tell us a little bit about, about that? Yeah. So, um, so um, geez, almost, you know, almost 40 years ago, I got in a car accident. I, I was, I was a surfer and then I was a, also a photographer and um, I got in a car accident and I broke both my legs um, really bad like my right leg in 33 places my left in seven and so I was in a wheelchair for a year 33 and the said, yeah 33 places Jeez. on my right leg and seven on my left I didn't even know so, there were that many bones in in in, uh, in a leg <laughs> I just kind of crushed the bones I had basically the pieces and so um the doctor they didn't want to be put weight on my feet feet and stuff like running around or the normal rehab that you do they, they but they said I should swim as much as I could um for rehab and so um so as being a surfer I thought oh you know okay I'll start swimming and then I thought you know what I should do is I said you know when you're surfing you always paddle over a wave and you see all these cool angles that most people don't get to see so I decided to put my still camera into water housing I put into water housing and I started shooting pictures of my friends surfing and that's kind of was the start of my whole career I um I love shooting you know I mean I always wanted to surf and so I'd, sometimes I'd take my board my surfboard take a couple of pictures and then surf and then then slowly after a while, I just started just bringing my camera and I'd trade off with my friends surfing. And then um, as I got more into taking pictures, I just would just have more fun taking pictures than surfing. So I just started doing that. And then I slowly got bored with um, the pictures and then uh, my legs were getting stronger and stronger. And then I was able to walk. I got out of the wheelchair. Um, it took me about a year of, of swimming before I could get, you know, get out of all that. Yeah, because they weren't sure if you were going to actually if you were going to actually walk again, right? Yeah, and back then they weren't sure if I was going to walk again. But um, um, I came back from that after you know a, a long rehab. But that gave me my career, and I um, I used to like really surfing bigger and bigger waves, and then I started swimming in bigger and bigger, bigger, bigger waves, and um, and then I just kind of took off. I was 
I was in um, uh, I was in Australia, and there was a photographer shooting the the ASP of surfing over there. But the waves were really big, and the guy goes, "Oh, I'm not going to go out." But I was standing right next to him, and he goes, "It's too big to go swimming out there." And I go, "You know what? I'll swim out there." And so that they're like, "What?" I go, "Yeah, give me that camera," and I just swam out there, and and that was like the start of my uh, career in the ASP water photography area. So I just started swimming and. Amazing. Then I do, I traveled nine months of the year for 22 years, I believe. Every for nine months of the year, gone just on tour, swimming at every place around the whole world, and I got really good at that. And then I was got you know bored of doing the um, surf contest and kind of ventured in doing commercials, TV shows, and then and then feature films. Now we do a little bit of everything, all the gigantic movies that you see that we we get involved in. Yeah, we'll we'll um. I want to talk about the swimming thing because we need to circle back to that. Uh, it's a little bit crazy, but my this is a question for my son. He's four years old. He's a crazy superhero fan. You did do X Men, right? One of the X Men yep. films. Amazing. I did X Men too. Yeah, yeah. X Men too. Yeah. Yep. Back when yep. it was still good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back when it was still good. They get, they get kind of crazy nowadays, but yeah, I did X Men too, and I did the, the, the very ending scene when they're stopping the water and all that kind of stuff. So. Where she dies, where um, Jean Grey dies in the water, yes, or those, yes. so we thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing, amazing. Yeah. Okay, so he's gonna love that. I'm gonna tell him. I'll I'll show him that part of the film, and I'll say, right, Dada knows <laughs> the guy who who did that. That'll be awesome. Um, right. so okay, you you're actually a little bit crazier than the surfers then, because those guys are crazy for surfing those big waves. You swim in them, and not only do you swim in them, but with a the camera as well. It's insane. Yeah, but I think those guys they're 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 crazier than the us guys. I think you know they, because they like we can see what's coming on. They're they they're in the tube and they're driving and they, so um I mean we everyone takes chances you know um and you know I I got I got re injured later. I'll talk about that later. But um um you know it's just like I, if you're in this business you're gonna get hurt somewhere along the way a surfer or a cameraman. There's I don't think there's any way to kind of go through your whole career without having some serious accidents along the way for both the surfers look at garrett look at all the almost every single big wave surfer you see they've had a, some traumatic injuries um the yeah. boys and the and the women and the same as yeah. all the cameramen like every cameraman's had their teeth knocked out broken legs ribs um you know i've broken legs ribs bones um and I, i'm paralyzed now at the end of it um after all this i went through i got paralyzed 10 years ago crazy yeah crazy yeah no it's madness i know we had um we had another guy we've had garrett on the podcast but we had another guy called um sergio cosmico or cosma he's the jet ski driver who rescues the guys yeah. and he had he pulled out ricardo kosha who was the guy that broke garrett's record yes. um and that story is insane as well because a year before <laughs> ricardo kosha almost died on the beach in Nazare. And then a year later broke the world record. And then you've had Maya and I mean, they've all, they've all been pounded by the waves there, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, in Nazareth, especially, you know, there's a gigantic shore break and it's shifting. So it's not like, like at Jaws in Hawaii, there's a, there's a couple of predominant peaks and there's a good sized channel. So you always got somewhere to run to Nazareth. It's all over the place. So it's, a, I think it's a quite a bit scarier than most places. Yeah. I, well, I would say so. I lived in Nazareth and, and I mean, the, the idea of somebody surfing there was always not really thought about, you know, it was, uh, I remember I mean, when I lived in Nazare, you could still go down to the lighthouse, just go and drive your car down there and sit there and just enjoy the view. And uh, I remember a couple of times being there where maybe it was about 15 meters and you can feel that rock shaking. So yeah. for like 30, it must be insane. Um, but let's talk about you and, and Portugal. We'll come to the 100 foot wave um, in a little bit. But let's talk about you in Portugal. I mean, I didn't realize you, you, you've you been to Portugal many times long from 30 years ago. Um, yep. Tell us about your first visits to Portugal. Um, the first visit I was here, um, I think we were doing a contest at Praia Grand and we, we stayed like in Sintra. Mm -hmm. And I remember going up to the Moors Castle and all these. I mean, it was just right from the get go. I just thought, wow, this place is just so beautiful, you know? I mean, I. I remember the, one of the first trips there, I, um, they had like these Bondia coffees and I was just, it was cold. So I was drinking those coffees and my wife's saying, you better stop drinking all those coffees and I ended up getting a big headache. But I, I don't know, I just, the castles and just, just the beauty of Portugal. It's so beautiful and it's, 
and it's the people are nice. It's it's amazing. You know, in Hawaii, we um, there's a lot of Portuguese people in Hawaii as well. But we have this one soup. It's called Portuguese bean soup. And when I got to Portuguese, they are like, "What? What is that?" They didn't know that. But I I think maybe in the Azores they have that, but not not really in Portugal. So, but I don't know. Por Portugal is just like a special spot to me because of the people. Just the surroundings and the, just the history is just it's just amazing. And then the food, I really miss the food. I mean, right when I leave there and I go home and I start eating all this junk food. I mean, even over here, everything is junk. And then when I when I go to Portugal, I mean, even the last time I went to Nazareth, we had it, like it felt like a seven course meal, a couple of bottles of wine, and they're like, I can't remember what like they're like that's thirty five dollars. I'm like, wait a minute, you must have made a mistake because it's got to yeah. be more expensive. But it was. It really was that affordable. So I, I just thought, what a beautiful place to live in. And, and, and it was affordable. And, they, and, and the people are fantastic. What's your, what's your favorite kind of Portuguese dish food? Well, I just love the sea bass over there. That's probably, the, you know, that's, and I know it's, if it's not really a Portuguese dish, but the way they just bring out the fish, and I would have sea bass almost every day, I think. I think. But um, God, I loved everything. Everything's good. The salads, I mean, you know, Garrett's, I've been, I was shooting Garrett since he was, you know, growing up small. And so Garrett's a perfect guy to, to discover Portugal because he's such a hard charger and he puts his heart into it. And I think um, he was the perfect guy that, um, to expose Nazare with his, you know, his, his determination and just, um, I don't know, everything. But when Garrett went there, he, he talked to me about the food too. And he said, go to Celeste and show me all these places. And, yeah, Celeste. Um, and so when I got there, I realized, man, it is so beautiful, but you're right. The food is amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, what, I mean, what, maybe it's a difficult question to, to answer Mike, but kind of everybody has these like expectations of Portugal, you know, now it's people that maybe have different expectations because it's more, Portugal's more well known. It's it's more there's more publicity. There's more there's things like documentaries. But when you went, Portugal was this little sort of hidden corner of Europe. What were some of your expectations, and and what surprised you? Um. Yeah, well, back when I went, it was it was I, I went with my wife, and 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 she and she loved it. She was traveling around the world with me as well. But um, I mean, just the beauty, the the castles, and just like everything in there, like. Patima and stuff like that. Fatima, like there was yeah, like yeah. the um, you know, the, the, the way that people would go on their knees and to the church and just so much history of uh, just everything. I think that was just intriguing to me because it just everything was beautiful. Like for a photographer or a cameraman, you just it's a perfect place. You just I mean you can't even bring in a film or foot it, you know, it's just you just it's everything is beautiful. And um I mean the food gosh like everything about portugal is good that's why i was saying you know god i'd love to have a place out there it's you know it's different and and the people the people are just amazing like here you go to la and all this, you ask people to help you this they just walk by ignore you don't people in portugal they'll go they go out of the way to help you and and they're honestly good people it's not like you know there's they're not like all these fake people and i just fell in love with portugal way back when and um you know i probably drove past Nazare so many times throughout the years and um, I never even knew about the wave. And so I wondered what it'd be like way back then. Cause now it's, yeah, it's growing fast. And it's like, you know, um, you know, people are getting attracted to it. And when, when I was there um, the last couple of shoots, I said, gosh, there was just thousands of people, like a lot of Europeans, everyone just coming to look at this wave. And, um, and I just think it's going to get more and more crowded, unfortunately over there. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, it's, it's, if you've ever, have you ever been there in the summer? Um, not in the midsummer, but I know it's really cool. Everyone's got their jet skis and they're just, it's just madness. Everyone's just swimming around and, um, you know, yeah. they can, most people can swim in the water, not like in the wintertime. It's freezing cold and it, it's death defying. So the summer is yeah. fun, you know? Yeah, the summer there, I mean, if you go, the, apparently Nazare goes from a, a, a population of around, 15,000 people year round to about a hundred in the summer. And it's mostly Portuguese people rocking up there for a good summer holiday. And the place is, is crowded, crowded, crowded. So I think they kind of used to it being crowded, but maybe not used to it being crowded for so much of the year, you know? So this whole uh, influx yeah. of people coming in during the winter is something new, I think, but uh, 
yeah, I think they'll, I think they'll be okay. I think they'll, they'll hang Yeah, out. you know, um, it was funny. Like I, um, I was there. Um, I was just fitting ship uh, the the hundred foot wave there, and we had. I, I was there for carnival, and so okay. everyone was dancing in the streets for like yeah. five days and partying, and it was it was just crazy. And then um, and then we flew home, and it was right right into COVID, and so we flew home from this dancing with thousands of people to like everyone was scared of COVID, and we we're like, well, I, we didn't even know what was going on. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, COVID COVID took a. COVID took a break for carnival, you know, it's just, it's common knowledge. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, so that was as crowded as I saw it was with in the middle of carnival with all the people and the parade yeah. and everyone dressed up and it was pretty and wild. All the bars and, and, and that's a real, that's a real Nazare experience because Nazare, there's no, they don't do carnival like Nazare uh, in the rest of the country. Like most places, the town will shut down for maybe two days, whereas Nazare, they'll shut down for five. You know, actually a month. They start celebrating Carnival a month, a month in advance. It's uh, it's madness. It's absolute <laughs> madness. But it's good fun. It's yeah. good that you experienced that. Yeah, yeah. I got some pretty crazy pictures. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, I mean, what you, you know, just you you filming all of these guys and you you you've been filming the documentary because one of the things that I've noticed with um a lot of the surfers. I mean, we mentioned Dave Langer before. Um, you've got um. Garrett, you've got uh, Ricardo Kosha, you've got Maya, um, there's another American guy, um, the name evades me right now, but they all seem to come and experience it for the first time, and then they don't leave, like yeah. they end up sticking around. What do you think about that little place? I know it's Portugal mm-hmm. as well, but just that, 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 that part of Nazare that makes people want to stick around longer. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just a special place. And it's powerful. Like there's a few places in the world that's like that. Like if you go to Chopo in Tahiti, like at the end of the road there, you you go there and you kind of don't want to leave because the water's so clear and the wave is just different. That you know, it's a different wave in Tahiti. It's really thick. And Portugal is like one of those like three or four places in the world that it just catches you and holds you there. And it's hard to leave. And when you leave, you want to go back. And or while you're there, like just I need to get a place here. I need to like. I mean, it's such a beautiful place. That I mean, everything about it that people that and and the mother the way the ocean hits that peninsula there and especially right there at at Praia Norte where the the rocks are by that lighthouse it is like um it's kind of like I feel like it's one of the wonders of the world you know it's just amazing to see you know just look at that power right in front of you and you're right you can feel it (laughs) shake the ground and um and you just realize that you know you're just a really small thing and you just mother nature is so powerful and to, to live right there, and you have, you know, I, I I like to golf, so I would go down to Westcliff and golf right down there. It's very cool. And and um and then, you know, Panish is there, super tubes. Everything's kind of right there, and the, the people are just amazing. It's just, it's, it, and you got to kind of experience. I mean, if no one's been there, you better go. I mean, you can't, you can't not go to Portugal, especially Nazareth in your lifetime, um if because then you're missing something in your life. Yeah, I mean, um, talk about it as from a from a cinematographer's point of view. You mentioned already sort of the history. I, I'm I love castles, so for me, um, I don't know. Did you visit Abydos? Yes, I did. The castles yeah. along the way. It's just it's just amazing. Just and just to think the history of all that, the churches, the castles, the streets, the little cobblestone roads, everything. Even like you go to Maria's, and you know, it's just like it's just like a little family, and every, everyone knows everyone, and it's it's I don't even I was there like for Christmas too and even at Christmas it was amazing it's just like all lit up and I mean I think I um Mar Bravo it stayed that hotel Mar Bravo there in the corner and that was so central and it just like it, it was just so fun I mean it's it's I mean my wife's dying to go back and she's never gone to Nazareth but she's been on all those other places and I said like Sintra and all those other places she loved and I go this is even better I mean, you got to go to Nazareth. It's so cool. Like the, the boats, the way they go out of the harbor and just the history. For me, the, it's the history of this fisherman and them going out there and dealing with this wave and kind of like, you know, people have, have, have passed away from it. And 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 they 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 knew the dangers of being a fisherman and going in and out of there. And but they just do it all the time anyway. And just the whole history of that is it's just phenomenal. I mean, it's just great. I don't I mean. 
I've been there quite a bit now, and I, I and every time I go, I, I find cooler things. Yeah, well, that's what I wanted to ask you because because it's a small country, um, and one of the things that have sort of popped up a little bit on the on the on the podcast quite a few times is people talk about how diverse it is in, in such a sort of small geographical space and area. Um, from a cinematographer's point of view, that must be amazing that you've got that mixture of things in just all around you in a matter of kilometers. Yeah, it's like, you know, in Hawaii, we have the seven mile miracle we call, you know, from Haleiwa to Sunset Beach. You have a little bit of dip, every little diversified bit of waves. And Portugal is, is like that. You have everything is condensed. But I mean, it, it's larger, but it's just like so condensed of you have the, the, you know, Lisbon, all these the cool towns and then the, the old stuff and the new stuff and then the, the waves and the castles. I mean, it's really kind of hard to explain um, to like a normal person, like, you know, like, like Fatima, like, I mean, to me, I like the churches and then you just can't get enough of it. And um, um, what's, what's the most beautiful thing that you've seen? I mean, outside of the ocean, what what's the kind of the place where you we is it Fatima or is it somewhere else where you just kind of took your breath away? Um, yeah, Fatima was good. Like like Centro was interesting. The Morris Castle. I mean, that was a long time ago that I hiked up to the Morris Castle. I thought it was really quick and it kept going and going, but it was yeah, it was really cool. Um, I mean, Nazare actually to me is in the lighthouse. Even going inside the lighthouse, they kind of feel now it's now it's like a little museum in there, but the little store behind all that. I just think Nazareth is is the best place to me because you know you, you, you have a little bit that whole little bit of town and, and just the the vistas from from up at the lighthouse looking down at in the Nazareth town and it's it's I, it's pretty much breathtaking just right there in the, in, in the center town center and you, you can't any way you turn it's just breathtaking and the food you just you can't beat it and the prices it's like it's I mean yeah amazing amazing you must be very good being a realtor because everyone's probably wanting to go to it's, portugal now it has been busy it has been busy it's uh it's been busy i think i think it's still it's still relatively and and you know a little bit of a kept secret this whole sort of area because it's still lisbon and and Kishkaj and things like that but um but yeah it's it's uh it's growing in, in popularity for sure for sure yeah, I remember Kevs Kevs. I was like, the, I guess the kind of biggest like shopping center I saw was in Kevs Kevs. I guess you know, like really the Lisbon is. I mean, and then when you get out, you know, towards Nazareth, there's not much, and and that's what's so nice, you know, like and this is the sweaters, like the old ladies making the sweaters and stuff like that. There's everything is really cool. I mean, I got so many little trinkets from there, and every time I go, my wife's like, you know, quit bringing stuff. That normally she'd say that, but from Nazareth, she she hasn't. She likes. Let's me bring whatever up from over there. So it's cool. What have you got? What have you brought back from Nazare? I got a little boat. They had like these little boats that they would go out there, you know, for there. Cool. And they got kind of like it's, I, and it looks like a little ukulele, but it's not. And, and it's a little, kind of looks like a banjo. It was some funny Portuguese kind of um, guitar. And I really like the sweaters. The, the sweaters, I just love the sweaters. Amazing. Um, where, where else have you been? I know you mentioned Sintra, Kishkaj, um Mentioned Panish. No, have... my, yeah, I've been Panish. My, my memory's like, it's been so long. I feel like I'm, I must be getting old. I can't remember all the little towns, but um, was it Bronca Bronca? Like up, up at the top, there's like a little shipwreck. There's a wave out there. Um, okay. The Azores. Then, yeah. Um, um, let's see. I mean, I've pretty much been up and down the coast quite a bit, yeah. Have you visited any interior, like more closer to inland, close to Spanish border? No, I mean, I no, I, you know, I not that much. I used to go to Spain a lot. I used to, I used to do all of France, and then I would do um, the Basque country and all up there. But I never um, really, um, for me, because I was always been a water guy in the surf. I was, they was mainly get straight to the coast, and you know, half the time we'd be sleeping until we got there because we, we knew there were going to be big waves. So I didn't get to experience any much interior stuff. I mean. I did go golfing quite a bit on that last trip. There's a place called that West Cliff, and it, the course was amazing. It was like so beautiful, and I don't know if that many people golf over there, but it it was definitely 
Um, beautiful. Yeah, I mean the, the Portuguese don't golf too much. It's more for for the it's it's more the uh, uh, kind of the foreigners that play. Did you did you play Pride del Rey by any chance? Which is just yeah. south of of you must play that one next. That's uh, an amazing yeah. course. Yeah, that's yeah. the the original. That's the um the the kind of the the anchor course for West Cliffs. So West Cliffs oh, yeah. is a second course off of Pride del Rey. And oh, Pride del Rey, the course is it's an older course, it's more established, but it's it's stunning. It's also you should try that one next. We'll have to we'll have to go play over there when I come. Yeah, I'm I'm a terrible golfer, so I'll make you look really good. All right, perfect. For I'm, I'm not that good either. I just I just have fun. For me, it's good exercise because I'm I'm still kind of paralyzed and I work I hobble on crutches. So when I golf, I, I put my crutches down and I use two clubs and I and I balance and then I drop one club and I hit the ball. So for me, it's kind of like a rehab exercise thing that I'm not scared to fall in the grass and I um, have fun. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. Otherwise, if you take golf too seriously, it'll kill you. I mean, yeah, it can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't take it serious at all. It's just, it's just a fun thing to go around and laugh at my friends and just have fun. So, yeah. Good stuff. Um, I've had a I've had a photographer on the on the podcast, Rachel Talibot. She should check her out. She does um ocean photography. And um one of the things that she spoke about with Nazare, and, and maybe you can elaborate a little bit about this from your perspective, is she says it's it's one of the only places where you can one of the things she spoke about is it's one of the only places in the world where you can sit right on the the, the rocks or on the beach and see those waves close up. But then she also spoke about the angle because of the lighthouse and the beach that you can catch the wave at different angles without having to do too much. I mean, how special is that place from, from, from filming, from a filming perspective? Yeah. Cause like, you know, so um, Nazare in particular is spectacular because you have the cliff, the lighthouse there. So you, 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 you the waves crash into it. They crash right up on the rocks and, Pretty much you get the mist of the spray right on you. You know, I mean, you feel like you sometimes if you go down the steps, you could be too close because it goes right over the steps. So so you're right there from there. And, and also from in the water, looking up, you have this beautiful backdrop of the cliffs, the town, the, the, the um, lighthouse up atop. So from the water, looking back, it's amazing. From the cliff, looking down, amazing. And then if you go down on the beach, the Praia Norte beach down there, it's you see uh, the waves crashing on the beach and, you see, and when you're on the beach, you actually get to see the size of these waves when they go back and forth and, and you get to see that, you see how dangerous it is when you see the jet ski guys trying to bust through these whitewashes. And it, I mean, that's to me is like one of the most exciting things about there is just watching the jet ski guys doing the rescues and getting in and out of there because I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on and, and down on the beach, you really feel it. So, um, yeah, she's right. She, you have a little bit of everything out there. You can't, from a photographer or cinematographer's point of view, you can't go wrong. Or even on a, if you're going to fly a drone or go in a helicopter, you, you better bring a lot of uh, film or whatever with you because media, because you're going to just be rolling this nonstop because every way you look is beautiful. From the beach, to the cliff, to the water, to the air, it's, it's a cinematographer's paradise. How, how difficult it is, is it to edit it down? Like you take all this footage and you've got to choose 30 minutes for an episode or 25 minutes or 15 minutes for an episode. That must be challenging. Oh, uh, yeah. Th yeah, that's super challenging. Luckily, I, I didn't have to um, do all the whittling down. I would just give them all the footage and they probably hate me for that because I just gave them so much footage. Too like, much. oh, my God. But, but it's, it's. I mean, I'm sure um, for them it's pretty interesting too because it's best to have – a a lot and, and, and then, then not enough. And and if, if you're shooting Nazare, you're gonna have a lot no matter what. You just, even if it's small, it's interesting. And then there's, and the, you know, and just up and down the coast, there's so much happening there. Um, you know, and then Lino has his jet ski business and they let the tourists go out. So I'm sure every once in a while, all the Europeans get to go out and they get to see what it looks like without waves and just kind of feel what it would be like, you know, in the winter. Um, yeah. So it's, it's crazy. I mean, I, I often will take clients out to Nazare and, and you, you'll you be driving along the beachfront and you're looking at the lighthouse on a calm day and the water's really low and you can see the little rock in front of the lighthouse. And they'll say, but the photos that I've seen, the water's higher than the lighthouse. And uh, it's pretty insane how big it gets so quickly. 
Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's definitely nothing to be reckoned with if you don't know what you're doing out there. Um, you know, especially when the waves are big, like, you know, you know, sometimes you get there and it's foggy. And if you go out in the water and you think, oh, I'm just going to go and see, you'll probably die. You know, it's like, because that fog lifts and you're going to be in the middle of, you know, nature's yeah. wrath. And it's just crazy. So like, even, even, if yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, I definitely would not go in the water in the winter at Nazare. Never, ever, ever. Yeah. <laughs> even the shore break on the, on, on the Nazare side is, can be really heavy. And, it, and it's, the water is cold, you know, I'm I'm in Hawaii, so we're used to like warm water. And then in Nazare, you got a full wetsuit, cold water. The, the the water's not like as clear as it is in Hawaii. So normally in Hawaii, you dive under and you can kind of dodge the waves. In Nazare, you, there's none of that. So you're just really um you're at um nature's hand, and you got to know what you're doing out there. Yeah. Um. From a, a I mean. Tell us a little bit, um, Mike, about about the hundred foot wave and how that all came about. Um, it's it's now one of the most watched documentaries uh, in on HBO. Um, but tell us a little bit about how that came about, how you got involved, uh, and what it's become. So I made a movie um, called Chasing Mavericks in a, with Gerard Butler. <laughs> and um, bless you. They liked what I did with that movie, um, the Chasing Mavericks movie. And so they, they approached me and they wanted to um, do this thing with Garrett. And originally they wanted to do an IMAX movie. So um, I've done a few IMAX movies and IMAX cameras are extremely hard to get into difficult places and, um, and it's extremely expensive. So um, when I started doing a budget, breaking everything down, they're like, oh, wait, 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 this is crazy budget and it's very expensive. And then, and then I explained that it would, you wouldn't be able to get these cameras in these crazy places. And um so I think we kind of molded over and then HBO got wind of it um, with Chris Smith and Joe Lewis and they um, they picked it up. And I, I think it was the best thing that ever happened because um, first of all, the uh, you know, uh, IMAX movie would have just been a short one movie and one and done. And this is a, a series which we're, um, you know, starting to do season three right now. So um, it's been going on and on and on. And I think, um, I don't know, I think having HBO involved is, is, is amazing for Nazare and also the people of Portugal. And um, yeah, that's how I, but that's how I got involved. They asked me to um, bring what I learned uh, from Chase. I, I've been doing this for 40 years. So they wanted, you know, and, and I've been working with Garrett as well for a long, long time. So they wanted me to bring all my knowledge together and, and kind of bring it to the table to try up, help them put um, a really good show together. And so we, we, we had a good group of guys um, and everyone w was amazing. Every single cameraman, you know, they they got the goods. You know, Laurent and everybody, Ryan Miyamoto, um, Brock Lad, everybody just kind of pulled themselves together and made an um, amazing show. Yeah, I mean, um, it's incredible. The the first of all, the the footage, uh, Mike, is just out of this world. Like I've never seen Nazare shot like that, and it's just beautiful and it's just so wonderful to see Nazare shot from that perspective and in that way um almost like it's what it deserves you know it's uh because it's that much of a, a special place um and then also the I mean the drama behind it and then the story the human element with the story and and how the people have embraced the surfers and and um the history you know Gareth's story is super interesting how the time that it happened in his life and and all of this kind of stuff what can people expect from the show in your in your in your opinion? What do you think, think makes it special? Show, yeah, I think it's what makes it special. It, it is Garrett, it's Garrett discovering the wave and it's his trials and tribulations of trying to surf the biggest wave in the world and him in his search for the biggest wave. I've traveled all around the world with Garrett from Mavericks to Tahiti, all around. And um we're always would I mean, I guess this this group were Laird, Hamilton, all those would always search for this biggest wave, and and we don't never knew if we quite got it. And then when, when Garrett found Nazare, we thought, wow, this is something special. And um, I think people that watch the hundred foot wave will will feel that and feel how special the wave is and the people there, and that how like after all these years, like maybe they found the spot where the hundred foot wave is possible, and these gladiators that go there to ride it, and and their their story of each gladiators fight for survival um on every wave um and and what and how they risk their life to get the ultimate ride and and, and it 
and and it's truly that you know that people are risking their lives on those days to get this ultimate ride and 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 it, that's what it takes to do it and with with today they have you know special wetsuits and life jackets and and the jet ski guy drivers are, drivers are trained to you know come in and pick the guys up but even with all that it's incredibly dangerous and you just you just can't um you know mess with mother nature when mother nature gets that big it's a sight to see who, who rescues you? Who rescues you if something goes? Uh, uh, goes well, pain? we have jet skis that rescue uh, us too. You know, Laurent um, Pujol, he was shooting from the um, ski and he got his teeth knocked out once. But you know, the, the jet ski, the surfers um, and and the cameramen, they, but they both rely on jet ski drivers to save them most of the time. And or you just get blown to the beach. Um, and same as Tahiti and, and at Jaws and Pipeline. You know, the the water cam and I'll have, um, you know, water patrol looking out after them. So yeah, everyone needs rescuers and even the rescuers need rescuing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you, you're a guy that's, that's got this special relationship with the ocean. It's, it's, it's kind of be, was involved, involved in, in healing you. And, and, uh, and you talk about, you know, visiting Portugal being close to, to the ocean you this is leading to a question by the way um you might have found some some kindred spirits then in portugal there's this culture of that love and fear and respect and necessity for the ocean um in a place like nazare but i mean it's a really it's a it's a portuguese cultural thing have you found that 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 connection with the people and and their 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 relationship yes. with the ocean Yes, absolutely. I, I mean, I, when I, I felt right at home when I first came to Portugal. Um, and then when I first came to Nazareth, I felt even more at home because when I actually got to Nazareth, I'd I, I gotten paralyzed um, doing that Chasey Mavericks movie um, from, and I was paralyzed from the waist down. And so I knew the ocean was special to me. And, and, and I, even after my injury, I came back, my second injury, I came back and the ocean healed me and, and continues to heal me. And I felt the, um, the healing powers of the ocean at Nazare, like like stronger than anywhere else in the world, um, and the people there, like I I, I went to um, I can't remember the the place, but it was a kind of a little rehab center there, but it's right on the ocean, and and, and you're looking at the waves, and you're and you're exercising, and you're, you know, that, that they're helping you walk and massage you and doing all this rehab there and in Nazare, and I felt like I got um, you know more stability, and I, I was rehabbing better there than anywhere in the world because of this of mother nature's powers and it's kind of it's almost hard to explain but yeah it's 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 just a special place for anyone that um really feels like they've come from the ocean you know I and mean, you feel like aquaman or something like you know you, you feel this power and it, you feel like the this is like the home of this power and nazare is such a special spot and i i i just can't I, I almost don't want to see what happens in the future because I don't want it to change because it's so beautiful now. But um, I think that it is, it's nice for people to experience the healing powers of the people, the town, and the ocean of Nazareth. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what about that? I mean, what about the Portuguese coastline in terms of just the raw nature? I mean, it's you, you know, I'm from South Africa and We've got a beautiful coastline as well and uh, beautiful beaches, but it's been so overdeveloped and um, built up. And I mean, it's not, you see, you, there are parts of Portugal where this has happened as well, but for the most part, you've got a, you've still got parts of the coastline, like, like north of, of like North Beach and up where it's just raw nature and coastline. Um, yeah. This is special today in today's world. Yeah, it is so special. You know, I've been to Africa probably twenty or thirty times too. I'd go to Jeffrey's Bay every every year. Jeffrey Bay. And, um, yeah, and, and and I loved it over there. And it is kind of raw. And it, you know, it has gotten built up. And Portugal, Portugal, it's like it hasn't lost any of its. Um, God, I don't know what finesse. I don't know what. There's not even. I can't think of a word for. It, but it's just. It has. It, it. Yeah, it's still special. It's still very raw. I guess raw is a good term for it. it you, you, it hasn't lost any of its rawness. It's like you're going out in Antarctica or somewhere where it, it even after all, all these years, like the town is there, but the, the beaches are just 
I mean, it's scary. You got to you got to really know what you're doing along any of those beaches and on any given day. Um, if you know the rip tides, the currents, it's 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 not a place for kids to play um, in the winter. Yeah, that's true. Um, the water's colder. But, you know, this is good for, for fish. If you speak to fishermen, they say that the colder the water, the better the fish. Man, well, I guess so, because, man, when I was there, the fish was amazing, man. Those, that, those little fishing boats that come in with, I mean, the sea bass, I don't know I don't know what they do, but that sea bass is just amazing. I, I, I just was here in Hawaii the other day, and I ordered sea bass, and they brought it to me, and I'm just, like, so disappointed. I'm like, oh, <laughs> gosh. I gotta get back to Nazare. <laughs> Nazare, Nazare has ruined fish, fish for you, for everywhere, yeah, uh, everywhere else. It's the best, man. It's so good, and it's just like the food is just so good. And then I, for for me, the food is for, um, kind of healing as well because it felt just so pure. You not you don't have all these, you know, you know, products that are just like I don't know, they just throw out all this junk and stuff. And over here in America, especially, um, por Portugal was. Everything was felt clean and good and healthy yeah. and and yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, I, I I'm I'm quite a big guy, so I, I eat well. My wife is Portuguese, so she feeds me very very well. <laughs> so when whenever 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 we want to go eat fish, the only place that is on the list is is Nazaré, um, because it's just amazing and just the way that they do it. You know, I mean, just what you're talking about. It's just clean and simple and grilled with some salt and. It's uh, it's delicious, um, but I was going somewhere with this, and um, yeah, when when I go when I go overseas, I, I do. I, I, after a couple of days, it feels I feel bad, like I feel physically not well because of the food. And then you get back, and even at the smallest little cafe, hole in the wall, mom and pop diner, you can have a fresh plate of food, and it just yeah, it just feels good. Yeah, it's good. I mean, if everyone. I mean, if, if you like to eat, you got to go to Portugal. You especially got to go to Nazareth, especially and and eat. I mean, it's just amazing. Celeste is there. I like her little shop and and Maria's shop. It just it's it's just good. It's the food, the wine. It's just the perfect in the setting. It's just the perfect place. Yeah. Where else would you like to visit? What other part of the country would you like to explore? I would like to go. You know deeper to the Azores, I think. And then I, I'm, I just like to spend more time um, right right in Nazare, actually. Just, I mean, just, I think there's so much more to see right there. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't, that's a good question. I haven't really, I guess, looked through the map to just kind of see where I've missed. And maybe that, that you know, further in, inland is, you know, like you had said, I haven't gone inland. So uh, maybe I wouldn't mind exploring a little further inland just to see. I would, Maybe on a, yeah. a couple of road trips. If you like castles, you got to go. You got to go a little bit inland. Uh, there's a, a place called Beda Interior, which is on the Spanish border, and it's they built the most incredible castles that you can imagine because that's that was kind of the frontier where the Spanish would invade. And so we've got these amazing. They actually shot um, what's it called, House of Dragons? You know, from um, oh, really? yeah, they shot it at one of these Portuguese castles, castles called Monsanto. And it's like another world, man. It's just, yeah, it's, uh, so if you like castles, there's uh, there's more than 300 castles in Portugal. Wow. So, so, yeah. I do. I like castles and churches, castles and churches. Like, it's just cobblestone well, roads. It's like, yeah, it's amazing. In every, in every Portuguese village, there's a church and a, and a cafe. So if you like you like the coffee, you like churches, you're, you're good no matter where you go. Yep, yep, absolutely. <laughs> good stuff. The coffee is very good too, man. It's like, the, everything is good. I mean, Portugal's they you guys got a really good you guys kept a good secret for all these years. So thank you for sharing it with us. Yeah, it's it's, it's sharing is caring, you know, as Barney the dinosaur <laughs> said. Mike, yeah. um a quick thing. I know I, I know you've sh also shot a couple of um you've done a, I saw you shot a couple of shark um sharks and um the great whites. Are there sharks out in Nazare? Have you seen anything that we should be now, aware I, of? I haven't seen sharks out there, but I'm sure there are. You know, there's when there's water, there's sharks. Um, but I haven't seen them. I, I mean, I saw them a lot in Africa. I used to go and film the Great Whites in Africa a lot. Um, yeah. I filmed them all around the world. Um, I'm actually just filming sharks right now. I'm going. I'm going to Palau in a few days to yeah. do um, 
you know, big, big underwater shoot up there as well. And we'll be shooting a lot of sharks, but I haven't seen any um, in Nazare, but there's so many fish and sharks are such a big part of our ecosystem um, and keeping the, the fish healthy that, the, the, you know, it, it, it weeds out all the sick and whatever. So I'm sure there's sharks in, in Nazare, but I wouldn't worry about them because they're very well fed. <laughs> what what's down there? What what's the most interesting thing you've seen under the water? I mean, you know, I was gonna go down um um in, into the cavern right outside of Nazare there, but um every time we went down there, it was kind of it was all stirred up from the from the waves. So I never got a clear clear enough day to get out there. Um I do fear like there could be a lot of trash down there, someone said, in the in the canyons that swept through um maybe from other countries or whatever is and the, the caverns are the, the valley so deep underwater there that it may have caught in a lot of trash i've found that in other places in the world which is is sad but um yeah and i so i and i i, I hope people you know start learning all of us around the world to you know like stop using plastics and all these things that kind of i think we need to save our oceans and, and preserve it because before you know it um if we don't it could, this could all go away but nazare is to me, it's as raw and as pure as you can get. It's beautiful. Mike, um, what's what's one thing that you want people to, to remember and take away from our conversation? Well, I think I would like people to know that, you know, Portugal and the people of Portugal are amazing and, and, and extra special in Portugal is Nazare. The food, the people, and the waves are like what I would like people to go and experience if they haven't done that in their life. Because um, I think if everyone could act like the Portuguese people do and and share the love of life with each other, then we could have a, the world could be a better place. Because right now it seems like turmoil and all these guys are fighting and we're worried about wars. And you go to Portugal and you kind of forget about that. And the people are so lovely. And I wish the whole world could be like that. So I wish we could you know, do something like that. Yeah, I love that. Well said. Um, how can people follow you online? Keep in touch with your work. Uh, see what you're um, up to next. Yeah, I, my my website is saltandairstudios.com. And, um, or you can just Google Mike Prickett and then um, we can tell you we're doing a bunch of stuff all around the world. We're chasing big waves all around the world. We, we'll be coming to Portugal. Actually, I have a crew there right now, but we'll be um, coming to Nazareth every every big swell. So um, yeah, I think if you want, it's not far, hard to find me, but yeah, no, that's good. And yeah, I think that's a, that's a wrap. Well, no, wait, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I want to invite you to have some, to, to come and have some fish with me in Nazare. I'll take you hopefully a place that you've not been before. Um, so yeah, well, next time you're here, let me know and we'll have, we'll have a, a fish lunch. Yeah. And, and we'll go golfing too. And golfing, yeah, yeah, golfing yeah, and laugh yeah. and laugh at each other, <laughs> laugh at each other's game, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mike, uh, finally, a question that we ask all of our guests: Portugal, the simple life, why? For Portugal is the simple life because of the beautiful ocean, the beautiful people, and the soul of the country. Um, it's definitely the simple life and the way that we should all live awesome thank you so much I've loved this conversation Mike I hope to meet you in person one of these days yes thank you for having me um, I'm stoked and um, we'll, we'll catch up soon and thank you very much that's a wrap so thank you once again to Mike and thank you to all of you for listening please subscribe share with your friends give us a thumbs up and please leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget, Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine, so download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, Sejas bem-vindo. Welcome to The Simple Life.